In this video, we're going to cover velocity and acceleration analysis of a multibar linkage. So previously, we've talked about position analysis and how to solve that. But sometimes you also want to know the velocity of a certain link or a certain point on the mechanism. And same thing for acceleration. So we're going to cover how to solve that. So basically, starting with position, you can take the time derivative. to get velocity. And you take the time derivative again to get acceleration. So sometimes you have to use product rule, sometimes you have to use chain rule. So we're going to go through an actual example of how to do this using the dump truck. So here's the dump truck problem. Um, we've already solved position in a previous video and identified knowns, unknowns, etc. So we're going to start off from that point. Um, if you don't remember how to do this, go back to the previous video in the link. But we're going to start off here with velocity. So we need to do first, write the velocity equations in matrix form. So we'll take the derivative of position, get velocity, and then put that into matrix form. Matrix form will involve the Jacobian. And then using the Jacobian, we can set its determinant equal to zero and figure out any singularities in the mechanism. So using the determinant of the Jacobian and Kramer's rule, we can solve for the velocities, unknowns. Then we can also find an expression for the speed of that particular point. And finally, we can derive the acceleration equations and write them in matrix form. So let's go through this. The first step to get velocity is to take the time derivative of position. So from the position equations, we'll take the derivative and get x dot and y dot. R1 doesn't have a derivative because R1 is a constant. So we'll skip that one and then we'll have to use product rule and chain rule on the R2C2 because, uh, and the R2S2, because R2 changes in both length and in direction. So the angle changes and the length changes. Now R3 only changes direction, just theta three. So that one will not be a product rule, only a chain rule. So let's get started. So now that we have the velocity equations, we need to put them in matrix form. Remember matrix form, J theta dot equals B. So J is the coefficient matrix. Theta dot is the unknowns and B is everything else. Remember that B will involve a sign change as we move elements from the left side of the equation to the right. So let's put this now in matrix form. So looking at this, we'll have a Jacobian matrix two by two. Then we'll have an unknowns is two by one, theta two dot, theta three dot. And then the B matrix will also be a two by one. So now we take the coefficients. So from the X equation, the rows here represent x and y. The columns represent theta 2 and theta 3. So theta 2 is the left column. Theta 3 is the right column. x is the top row. y is the bottom row. So we'll put in these coefficients. So in the x equation, then the theta 2 dot coefficient is r2, s2. Then in the theta 3 column, um, the theta three dot coefficient for the x row is negative r3, s3. So then in the y, we'll just get those coefficients negative r2, c2, and r3, c3. So that's covered all the theta two dot stuff, all the theta three dot stuff. And so then what goes in the b matrix is everything else, which in this case is just the r2 dot stuff.
and note the sign change when we move from the left to the right. So we have j theta dot equals b. So this matrix is the Jacobian. Um, so we put the velocity in matrix form and we figured out the Jacobian. Now to figure out any singularities, we just set the determinant of the Jacobian equal to zero. By inspection, we should be able to look at the mechanism and identify where some singularities can happen. So looking at this, we would see that probably there's going to be singularity when this point matches up with this point. So the truck is completely flat or when it's completely tipped over. When R2 is all the way stretched out um, or at zero. So let's verify that that is the case. Trig identity there. Well, R3 is never zero. R2 could be zero. The other singularity is when theta2 equals theta3, which in turn would be zero or pi. So here's where the singularities are. So now we need to solve the velocity equations for one unknown. Well, to do that, since there are no zeros in the Jacobian matrix, it will be very difficult to solve for it algebraically. So we should use Kramer's rule. So theta two dot equals determinant of J two over determinant of J. And remember that J two is just the Jacobian with the theta two dot column replaced by the B column. So that will look like we take the regular Jacobian, and the first column is the theta two dot column. So instead of that R two S two and negative R two C two, we'll put B. And then the second column remains the same for theta three dot. And the determinant of J we have found already So this is theta two dot, and we can follow a similar procedure to solve for theta three dot. We can cancel the R twos, and then this, the trig identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So then finally that simplifies down to that, that's theta three dot. So we have solved for both the unknowns. Now, if we wanna find an expression for the speed of point P4, we'll need to define another vector R4. So the length of R4 is known, added over here. And the angle of R4 is going to be 90 degrees different than the angle of theta three. So just write this here, theta four equals theta three minus 90 degrees. So, we want to find the speed of point P4. We could write the position vectors all the way to P4 and then take the derivative and from there get velocity. So I'll explain how to do that and kind of get that started. And then I'll show you a shortcut to solve it faster. So if we want to get to, we'll do this in blue so that it's easy to see because the screen is already full. So if we need to get to P4, we'll write the vector equation to get there. So if we start at the origin, we can go 
to R1 plus R3 plus R4 equals P4. So this is the position equation to get to P4. Just go R1, R3, R4. So if we wanted, we could take the derivative of this just the same way this is our sort of a vector loop equation, but it's not a loop because it doesn't end in the same place as it started. It's just a vector equation. You could call it a vector point equation if you want. So we could go through the same whole procedure that we did for the loop to do the point. But there's a shortcut here. Since we see that um, the bottom corner of the rectangle is a pivot point, and then we can actually see that the truck can be split into triangles. So let's call this R5. Um, so we know that R5 equals square root of R4 squared plus R3 squared because that's a right triangle. And we know that since the whole rectangle is rotating around a fixed point at the same angular velocity, then theta five is going to have the same angular velocity as theta three and theta four. So we take the derivative of this, theta four dot equals theta three dot, because 90 degrees doesn't have a derivative. Um, but you can see that because R4, R5, and R3 are all connected on the same rectangle, they all have to rotate with the same speed because they're stuck together. So we know also that theta 3 dot has to equal theta 5 dot. So velocity of point P Vp equals r5 theta 5 dot. V equals r omega. You probably remember that from physics. So then we can write Vp equals r5, which we had here is square root r3 squared plus r4 squared times theta 5 dot, which is theta 3 dot. So that is how you get VP. Now we're gonna look at an example of this in MATLAB. So we'll see how it's all programmed. You can see down here, I have put in all of the equations that we worked out and solved it using Newton's method. And then at the end, we're going to plot velocities, accelerations, and the velocity at the point. So let's run. So here's point velocity versus piston position. So that was the P4 that we worked out. And then here we see the velocity spike for theta two dot. Um, and that's because the piston is just starting. 